Cause tonight will be the night that I will fall for you over again. Listen, the harmony. Oh my gosh, that's good. Yo, what's up, Compass? Hey, glad you're tuning in. Um, obviously, we don't have Compass at the building tonight. Uh, so if you showed up, you're probably there by yourself. But could you grab my water bottle for me? Cause boy. I think I left it there. I think boy, I left it at boy. Me. Not sure. Yo, we just want to break down a few of the things that you might have missed about the resurrection. If you haven't checked our reel, go ahead and do that because this will make it make a lot more sense. And at the end of the breakdown, we want to pose a few questions. So we would love for y'all to chat about these things with your group text, maybe your small group leader or whatever, and just see what God reveals to you, all right? So here we go. Four things you might have missed in the resurrection. Let's dig in. Are y'all ready? Okay, here's number one. The stone was rolled away from the entrance of the tomb so the disciples could come in, not so Jesus could come out. The Lord been gone. He was out of there. The stone was rolled away for the onlookers to witness. Can you imagine the anticipation? Mary comes to Peter and then to John to exclaim that the Lord has risen. Yes, then I love this. This is so good. John 20, 3 through 4. It says, so Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running. Like they were running like a track star. <laughs> but the other disciple outran Peter, reached the tomb first. Come on now. John definitely put a little flex in it. He was flexing on him. Oh my gosh. But I think it's so cool, it's in the details. The details are to signify that this is so important to run towards Jesus. Yes. So I got a question for you, you ready? Do you sprint towards Jesus? Do you run towards his miraculous power in your life? We should be anticipating the work of the Lord always. He's always working yes. and always moving. Yes. And we should be people that gravitate toward that. Jesus is the best thing since sliced bread. He's the best <laughs> thing in this world. He's doing things like healing broken people, healing relationships. He's comforting lost yes. and wandering souls. He's redeeming people to new life. Yes. Yo, let's run towards that, man. Come yes, on. yes, that's so good. Hey, so number two, second thing you might have missed. Some of the other Jews actually remembered Jesus's prediction and the disciples did it. This is almost comical con considering how much time the disciples spent with Jesus. It's super interesting because you would think that the disciples would actually be the ones to remember right. Jesus's predictions, right. but the Jewish leaders seem to remember it and they actually make preparations in case it's true. And this brings up a pretty good reflection. You know, I wonder, do you as believers, do you believe that Jesus will do what he says he will do? Do you make preparations for him to work in your life? Everything that Jesus says is true and it's real and he is doing good things in your life and everything he says he will do, he will do. Throughout this Duet Me series, we're gonna look at these things and go through all the wild and mind-blowing things that Jesus says. But here's the kicker is that they're all true. And so we have to make sure that we're making preparations for Jesus to move in our hearts. You have got to be open to the Spirit moving in your life. Don't be closed off. The Spirit might want to move through the Bible or through your spiritual leaders in your yeah. small group, through small nudges or voices from God in your head. We have got to press into that. Got to press in. All right, ready? Number three. The same resurrection power is available, available right, right now. now. That's right. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, where does it live? It lives in you and it lives in me. Ephesians 1, 19 through 21, Romans 8, 11, that they'll tell us this. Yes. But however, this is tricky. What does this even mean? I don't know about y'all, but I ain't never seen nobody raised from the I dead. Haven't. I ain't never raised nobody from the dead. And I definitely ain't never healed nobody. But how does this make sense? We got, got you. The power of God is inside of you to resurrect you from dead and take you to new what? Yes. New, new life. life. That yes. means the power of God will take the believer to heaven one day to be with him in paradise. That's pretty good to me. Chilling, I like that. <laughs> but it also means we have the power to resist temptation and sin and do the good work of God. Yes. We can't do those good things without the power of Jesus. It's in our nat nature to be sinners. But the power of God, with it, we can now bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. Yes. The same spirit in us also means we can 
do these miraculous things. All over the world, miraculous all things are happening. World. Things like, man, Jesus healing people yes. supernaturally. Him supernaturally revealing himself. Yes. Financial holds being broken. Financial miracles. Enemies becoming friends. And so much more. We could write a whole book about it. Do you believe that the same power that raised Jesus is inside you? Do you believe that? What kinds of things could God call you to do with this kind of power from the Spirit? That's such a good question, Ooh. man. Hey, so number four, thing that you might have missed in the resurrection. It's simple, it's that if there is no resurrection, then our faith is useless. It don't even matter. Paul says that with no resurrection, we preach and we teach in vain. You'll see that in 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 14. So listen, y'all, the resurrection is perhaps the most important tenet of our faith. This is the exact reason why Jesus is the hope of the world. Come on. Any situation that seems hopeless or dark or bleak or broken, the resurrection Woo! means that there is new life and redemption for whatever Let's and go. whoever. Guys, this is good news. Come on, good the news. resurrection means that Jesus fulfilled everything that was written, planned, and prophesied yes, in the God's movement in the world. Yes, sir. The resurrection also means that death and evil were defeated once and for all. We have this image in our in our head, you know, that, that God and the devil are kind of duking it out and fighting, and it's like a battle versus yeah. good and evil. But guys, a little kicker here, a little secret, it's actually not true. God's already won. He's actually already defeated Satan, and through the death and the resurrection, we have the victory. 1 oh, yeah. Corinthians 15, 55 through 57 will tell us that God has already won, and if you are a believer in Christ, you're on the victorious team. We can be new in Christ, guys. Every sin, every mistake, every wrong step, whatever it is, you can turn a new page because of the resurrection. There is no sin too great. There is no person too far to be reached from the love of God. So my question to y'all today is how can you walk in new life because of the resurrection? Will you be with us on the last day when the saints are called up into heaven? How can you be new because of the resurrection? Hey guys, guess what? That's it, y'all. Because of the resurrection, we will receive new life yes. by inhabiting heaven on the last day and living as new creations here on this earth. Right here. But we got one more question. One more question, hey. One more question. Who needs to hear this video? Yeah. You guys, share this with your friends, with your coworkers, and with your classmates, and let them in on the greatest news of all time, that Jesus, Jesus is alive. alive.